Well, friends, let's start this pod show off today by celebrating the yeah. overturning of Roe v. Roe v. Wade. Yeah, we need to celebrate. That's yeah. a really big deal. We're just so thankful to God. He is so faithful, and it, it's time to celebrate. Yeah. You know, when you win a victory, we have to celebrate. Mm-hmm. It's the right response. Mm-hmm. So, yes, thank you, Lord. <laughs> yes, there's been so much prayer over, you know, almost 50 years, almost 49 and a half years mm-hmm. since Ro, uh, Roe v. Wade came into existence in, what was it, January of 1973, I think. Mm-hmm. And so I think it was some, I think I did the math. It was 18,050 days or something mm-hmm. like that, that Roe v. Wade was in place. And, you know, there's so much about it. You know, even Roe herself, after mm-hmm. the trial, you know, tried to get it changed because she realized that's not what she wanted and, mm-hmm. and actually went a whole different direction. And so just for our country to be able to experience that and that breakthrough and for God to come through on, such an incredible level. I mean, it's just un—it's just un, unimaginable. I mean, it's basically for our, you know, for all practical purposes, that's been the way it's been our entire lifetime. Yeah. And so, you know, mm-hmm. for that to change and for righteousness to, to come back, and that's a really big deal. Definitely deserving so of celebration. Yeah, and our hearts should rejoice because the scripture says um, to weep with those who weep and rejoice with those who rejoice. And so heaven is rejoicing yeah. because many little heartbeats will get to continue to mm. beat for a lifetime. And that is what we pray, that those little heartbeats, will, those little children will get to beat for their full lifetime, yeah. living the abundant life with parents who love them and raise them in godly kingdom ways Mm -hmm. so there's a lot to rejoice and you know i know that sometimes people can get really intense about like okay well but no now the church has to start taking care of um children and um start adopting and start um taking care of um women who are in difficult you know unwanted pregnancies or surprise pregnancies you know whatever and i just feel like well, it doesn't mean that we haven't been doing that already. Right. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> and nobody is trying to shirk any responsibility. Mm-hmm. We're just saying, absolutely, yes, we will. And we will continue to help people to know kingdom ways. And mm-hmm. this is a part of why abstinence is important. You know, right. let's do things God's way. And when we do things God's way, we get to experience the blessing. And a child, no matter what, is worthy of being celebrated because because God created that little precious life. Mm -hmm. And so no matter what the circumstances are, and I'm not saying that some things are not challenging, you know, that's some, a part of our, our 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 testimony, testimony, part of our story, but, um, but God is faithful. And let's think about the babies. Let's think about those little babies lives and we're to be protectors of their lives. And so it's exciting to Mm -hmm. think about all the, Mm. the joy. I mean, this morning we were in prayer and we were rejoicing and thanking God. And I just saw all the joy that made God's heart happy in seeing all these little children, little babies being birthed and all the joy that was being released on the Mm. earth because of their little lives. So children bring joy um so let's not ever forget that's right <laughs> that yes. it is, they're worthy of being celebrated in every every phase and they're wonderful so we give all thanks and mm-hmm. all honor to god and i'm so grateful honey i'm so grateful for all the people who have been praying for this you know almost 50 years and who i'm sure maybe even before that have prayed for these things right. not to happen but you know, when the unthinkable did happen and that um, Roe v. Wade was passed, then um, to that now in this season, that, or people who were praying before and have prayed f- for so long, um, I'm so grateful for those prayer warriors mm-hmm. who kept this as a priority. Now, we've prayed for mm-hmm. this for, I guess, a couple of decades now, but to see the, um, I'm just grateful. Mm. Because so many other people have been praying for so long, and we're seeing this breakthrough. So I want to encourage everyone, don't ever give up praying. That's don't right. ever Ugh, give yes. up praying. It, sometimes things are delayed, and it just takes some time. We're just going to stay committed to what it is that God's calling us to do. Mm. Yeah, and it's also, I mean, it's a celebration, a huge celebration for 
for babies for sure, but it's also a celebration for freedom and That's for right. getting back to what our country was really founded on. Cause yeah. you know, it's really not, they didn't get rid of abortion. What they simply said was, is that abortion is not a right guaranteed in the constitution, yes. which is a huge thing mm-hmm. to say, cause it's not in there. So what happened in the Roe v. Wade case and then the young case, I think, which was, was that 1992, I think was the second one that talked about women's health and the definition of women's health being extremely broad. But those two cases both got overturned uh, on Friday. And that overturning of both of those basically said, look, we're going to turn this back to the power of the people so right. that people can vote. And this is not something that is outside of, of the opportunity for the people to vote, for the representatives to create laws that people want. Mm-hmm. And so that's what is also a huge victory is it took away this frankly, a little bit arbitrary power that the Supreme Court gave on this issue and said, no, 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 this needs to go to the legislatures. Now, if they want to pass laws, they can pass laws, but that's the the Supreme Court's not going to trump what laws would be done. It's a very, very powerful thing for freedom. Yeah. So we're, we still aren't finished praying. So we're celebrating, but we're still going to continue to pray that at the state level, that, um, these, that babies will still be protected within every single state. Yeah. I so appreciate that we are one, taking the time to celebrate and pause in celebration. I mean, on, on social media, you know, just of course, like it's all that it's all that's on social media, you know, all over the weekend. And even with like the, in in general, you know, this is a broad statement I recognize I'm making, but in general, even like the celebration was short followed by, and we got a, this, 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 and this. And it's like, wait a second, like (laughs) we're talking about 50 years worth of prayers and an incredible victory. And God has come through in an incredible way. Let's pause and celebrate. That doesn't mean that there's nothing to be done. That's right. (laughs) It doesn't mean that there, it doesn't mean that there's not new activities that don't need to be you know, adopted or like things, sure. other things to think about, but That's right. my goodness, let's celebrate. Yeah, <laughs> yes. for sure. So we do, we want to give all glory and honor to God because he is faithful. Mm-hmm. So we thank you, Lord, so much for moving on our behalf. And we do ask you, Lord, to reverse this curse completely. We thank you, Father, that you are releasing your life. And I pray that at in every state, Lord Jesus, that, um, the people, your people in every state will vote for babies and for the protection of their lives. Mm -hmm. And so God, we just give you all praise Mm -hmm. and glory and honor. Absolutely. And I love too, that you were talking about that this is actually a restoration of freedom because Mm -hmm. the the narrative that's out there is this is a gross violation of our freedom and autonomy, you know? And so I appreciate you reversing that, Mm -hmm. um, that narrative. And it does, it does beg the question, how do we, how do we talk about this? You know, right. how do we talk about this with people who are, um, well, really non-believers who we can, we can come in with our biblical worldview that they do not have. And we mm-hmm. can talk about the Bible all day, but that falls on deaf ears because the, they, because people who don't have a biblical worldview are coming at this with, with their own experiences, their own worldview. And so it, it can cause, you know, just a, um, a chasm when it comes mm-hmm. to having conversation. And so how would you guys recommend that we approach that? That's awesome. It's important. Yeah, it's so important. And I, you know, I always say in these kinds of situations that we have to evaluate the sincerity of the person that we're talking to. Mm-hmm. And, and what I mean by that is yeah. that really the sincerity of the question. So there's, there's nothing to be gained by just being argumentative, you know, being argumentative, doesn't help, doesn't solve, it's just divisive, and it doesn't go anywhere. So if I come across somebody who, you know, I perceive as just basically angry and insincere, well, then there's no point in really having a conversation because there's no dialogue that's going to happen. It's only a, you know, it's just a, a diatribe. You know, they're just trying to go after you and, and, and prove their point, and they're yeah. not trying to, you know, there's no real dialogue that can take place. But let's say we're talking to somebody, you know, maybe a coworker or a family member, who just, you know, is just wondering, you know, I I don't understand, you know, Mm -hmm. well, how can we walk and and talk to them? And when it comes to it, you know, one thing about, I would say two things. One is, you know, the the movement is called pro-choice, you know, and it's, the idea was, and this goes again, I think it was the 1992 Supreme Court case, the Young case, where women's rights to health, you know, is that considered a, you know, a 
a constitutional issue. And certainly, everybody has some level of right to have health care. But what the, the court just undid in that is acknowledging, though, that when a woman gets pregnant, there's actually two lives that we're talking about. Yes. And so that, that's the piece that gets totally messed up. And that's really where the difference is between, you know, a pro-lifer and a pro-choicer is, is that fetus, and I even hate that name, so I'm going to say baby, Mm -hmm. you know, is that baby a, a, a baby? And so what the Roe court case did is it then shifted the conversation, not because is that a baby or not, or is it alive or not? So all of a sudden we start talking about viability. So at what age is the fetus viable? And that used to be about 26 weeks. I think now with modern technology, that's probably pretty close to 22 weeks, even younger. Mm-hmm. And it keeps getting younger, meaning that the, the baby can survive outside the womb at younger and younger ages. And that's why you've seen many uh, states beginning to ban at different levels. You know, Texas just recently passed the heartbeat bill, you know, acknowledging, okay, when there's a heartbeat, we're going to say that's the line. And so what, what Roe did is it caused everybody to try to find this line of viability and, you know, try to define that. But that's such a horrible um, case. Mm-hmm. The, the logic behind that is, is pretty flawed. Because if you think about it, you know, and, and all of us have, you know, babies and grandbabies in our, you know, kind of in our circles of influence right now. Mm-hmm. And so we can see them, you know, is a, is a one-year-old viable? I mean, can you take a one-year-old and leave them, right. in, the, leave them in the jungle? And, <laughs> right. you know, and let them, serve, you know, uh, so is a one-year-old viable? Is a, right. you know, is a 12-year-old viable? Yeah. You know, and then by the other end, you know, sometimes we're dealing with our parents. Is an 80-year-old that you're really having to take care of, oh, are, are they viable? And so the, the danger of letting viability be the determination of when it's okay to terminate a life or not just opens up a whole can of worms. It just opens up mm-hmm. a whole set of, of logic that gets, that gets pretty whack pretty quick. And so that was, that's where I would take the conversation if I'm talking to somebody that's sincerely asking is would say, is viability a legitimate reason to terminate a life? Mm-hmm. And then the other thing comes into, well, is it, is it really a human being? Mm-hmm. Well, what science can tell us straight up, and this is not even a question anymore, which just yeah. validates Psalm 139, at the moment of inception, at the moment the two cells come together, one from mom and one from dad, and the, the is it zygote? Is that what you get the very first? Yeah. Mm-hmm. The zygote? Mm-hmm. Can't believe I remembered that. I know, so that's the zy- impressive. <laughs> the, the, the zygote <laughs> is formed. That, that baby has unique DNA. That baby has the DNA that it's going to have for the rest of its life, and it is clearly and uh, undisputedly a unique human being. Mm-hmm. You know, and I always find it fascinating. You know, we want to talk about this, when does life start in the womb? You know, if we found a single-celled bacteria on Mars, the scientists would be running around everywhere That's going, right. we have found life on Mars. You know, so that is right. a, a, uh, you know, a, a, a baby is a baby when it's a baby. And I would say the, the other thing we need to pay attention to, this is a relatively new thing that I've heard, is, is now the concept of personhood. Mm-hmm. And so when does a baby become a person? And so the logic behind this is there's a point at which self-awareness and all of those things, and what's really dangerous about that is scientists tell us that's about 30 days after a normal birth. And so what some of them are trying to say is they're trying to introduce this idea, okay, well, the definition is you can terminate life before you're a person, and so that would mean up to 30 days after birth today. So there's all these different ways that the the pro-choice movement tries to tries to push this and, and work this deal to make it okay. But, but if we're also, and, and again, assuming I'm talking to a sincere person mm-hmm. because they say, well, a woman has a right to choose. I, I would just say, I just, with all due respect and with, you know, honor and understanding, we do have a right to choose. We can choose whether we're going to have sex or not. And I realize there are some extreme cases. We cannot define the norm by the extreme cases, mm-hmm. but for the, the vast, vast majority, it's really not about women's health. It's about, the ability to have intercourse without protection and without having to deal with the consequences of that. And that that's not a moral statement regardless of your religious perspective. That, mm-hmm. That's just a, you know, you can't be sloppy and, uh, you know, and then ex- expect to not have to have consequences of those decisions. Mm-hmm. And so, again, I would only say that in a, in a sincere way, in a sincere environment, but those are some logical ways of defending a pro-life movement without like going into scripture and whatnot. Another thing that I've been hearing that that I think, you know, just gets blown up on social media that's just absolutely 100% false is 
the um, the treatment of women for things like ectopic pregnancies and even in some cases calling a natural miscarriage and then needing to do a DNC procedure, you know, an abortion that thus lands at um, if if those things are classified as abortion, then that's where a lot of the um, the narrative that says so many women will die because the Supreme Court right. has overturned Roe v. Wade comes from that. And then I've, I've seen OBGYNs get on and post, you know, they're, that's just not true. It's not true at all. It's totally <laughs> made up. It's not totally true. made up. Have different mm-hmm. names for different treatments. They always preserve, mm-hmm. look to preserve the mother's life. That's if right. her life is in grave danger due to this pregnancy, they prioritize her life over the life of the baby. And so it's just, I mean, just even seeing the, um, the lies mm-hmm. right. that are out there, you know, it's important to, and that's mm-hmm. where I think it's important to, um, to learn these things. I mean, even personhood, like, I don't know much about, I don't know much about personhood. You know, I appreciate you just I- explaining a little bit more of what that is. And so to get that education, um, mm-hmm. not that you want to go out and look into debate everybody, but when you, when you have sincere answers to sincere questions in a sincere conversation, it's important to to know mm-hmm. these things. Right. I think it's really curious how creative um, we can get when we're trying to justify a wrong behavior. Mm. And so I really do think that a lot of times the reasons that people will sympathize with some of these wrong um, ways of thinking is because then we maybe have compassion in an area mm-hmm. because we know we have failure in that area. So we don't want, we want to avoid being hypocrites. So then we end up being soft on um, some of these moral issues. So instead of like, well, you know, I, I know what, where they're coming from because, you know, I know I've, I've been guilty of the same thing. So they're not going to like, oh, I'm not going to take a stand on that because I still have outstanding issues. And by that, I mean um, some, some sin, which, I mean, gets to a whole other topic mm. of recognizing that we do sin, I mean, every Christian, every believer, what is so amazing is that we have been forgiven Mm -hmm. of sin. So as Christians, we're not looking down on somebody else that has a different lifestyle or that we recognize, oh, we've been there or I've been healed and I've been um, forgiven of sins like this. So it's Mm -hmm. not that any that Christians are looking to say, um, oh, yes, I'm so much better than you, and you people who live immorally or y'all are sinners and I didn't sin that way, you know. No, it is that, no, I've sinned that way, and I'm so grateful, and I'm so, I can be humble before the Lord to recognize that he has forgiven me and set me free, and then there's where we can have confidence Mm -hmm. to know, to be able to take a stand. So I do think that's important to, that we have recognized we're not confident in taking a stand because, oh no, I wouldn't, I can't even understand or relate with people who are in those situations. It's like, no, because I can, but I want you to know there's a better way. We don't have to justify and we don't have to find now, now we're going to try. I think that's where all these made up, um, these made up ideologies come from, whether it's personhood, viability is like, I mean, it's just this trying to skirt around and justify sin. Mm -hmm. And instead of like, can we just call it what it is and then recognize this is terrible. I'm so sorry. And now I feel the pain of my sin. And I can, now I can recognize this is why I need a savior. This mm-hmm. is why we need Jesus. So you can see why the enemy doesn't want people to recognize that, oh, I have sin in my life. And the way to get rid of that feeling or that shame and that guilt is not by creating other um, other narratives and, oh, look at this. No, well, that's not really a baby. It's this. And, oh, no, no, this is okay. And this circumstance are making up stories that are not even true. Yes. Um, why do they need to do that? I was like, well, you don't need to do that when you can just be honest and speak truth recogn- and then recognize your need, which will always lead you to Jesus, which also just shows you why the enemy is just going to keep putting a spin mm-hmm. on everything. Oh, no, you don't need Jesus. No, <laughs> oh, no, that's not sin. Well, you didn't mean to. Or, oh, that wasn't a baby. That's a fetus. And, you know, it's always just throwing out lies. It's like, well, stop all the chatter. Can we just be honest and truthful here in this place? And that's where that always mm-hmm. leads us to the need for Jesus. So we're really so grateful mm-hmm. for Jesus and 
um, no matter what the circumstances are. That's why we've got so much compassion That's right. for, for people and what, whatever their camp they're in. Um, and so we just pray that they will get to know the reality of Jesus yeah. and you'll be set free and you can be healed and not just, a, he's the only, he's the one who cleanses us from sin. It's good. And we well, need it. <laughs> we do. We do we need, need it, it, don't we? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we can also celebrate you know, the fact that as we were just sitting down to record today, the news broke that the Supreme Court ruled in favor right. of the football coach who Thank was, yes. he, what, he was put on administrative leave for yes. praying like, on the sidelines or on the sidelines or on the at field the 50 at yard. the 50 yard, 50 -yard line. line. So it, yeah, yes. he was the head football coach. And at the ends of all the games, he just made it a habit of kneeling down after the game on the 50 yard line. And some of the players started joining him. And, uh, and then the, ultimately the school district fired him. They warned him and he continued to do it saying it. No, this is a, I, I have, according to the first amendment of the constitution of the United States, I have the, mm. the right to free exercise of religion and freedom of speech. And because of those two things, I have the right to pray in public. Even though I'm a public school official, I have the right to pray. And if the students want to join me, they can join me, you know. Mm. And, um, and he lost at every level all the way up to the Supreme Court, and then he just won an overwhelming victory at the Supreme Court. So it's a big deal. It's, it's a amazing. big deal for the freedom it's of religion. It's wonderful. Uh, yes. I mean, it's important for us to value our liberties. Mm -hmm. And I so appreciate that he didn't give up. And he, because mm -hmm. it would have been easier. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. It would have been easier to just, you know, I'm not in for this. I'm not looking for publicity. I'm just trying to, you know, coach some kids to play football. Right. You know, he could have gone just somewhere else or whatever. But I appreciate that. Um, he was willing to take this stand mm -hmm. at every level. Mm -hmm. And so many people have been praying about this. And it's, I mean, so it's a victory for the body of Christ. And it's a victory for the United States yes. of America. Because yes. our Constitution is, the values are being upheld. Yes. We have freedoms. So we only have freedoms if we can keep it, you know, as That's right. Benjamin Franklin stated, if you can keep it. So then we've got to fight for those liberties. And by that, I mean, being willing to stand, continuing to pray, and then learning. I, I'm constantly learning every day something new about the Constitution, learning something new that we can, um, that we need to stand for so that our liberties are not stripped away from us. Mm. And if you think about the Constitution, I mean, what we have is radically unique. Yeah. You know, the United States has had our Constitution for 234 years which is outrageous. When you look at just around the world, of the 193 countries that are in the United Nations, I think there's only 13 that have a constitution over 100 years old. And um, there's only two other than us. I think it's Norway and Sweden, something like that, that have a constitution over 200 years. And there's like 208 and 209. And we're 234. Yeah. And you look at France. I think France had mm. 14 constitutions since 1789 or something like that. And their newest one just came into uh, effect in 1964. So when you look at our form of government and the way it's working, I mean, it's, un it's unprecedented in yeah. world history. And so for us to fight for it and for us to see it actually working is really remarkable. Well, and I'll take this opportunity to direct people to your thought piece on um, separation of church and state, you know, which is where you, you outline. I mean, there were so many things in there that were uh, really eye-opening for me and what you just described about right. the, you know, the, the fortitude behind, you know, the, the Constitution of the United States, um, especially compared with other countries. I mean, that's just one of the really important things there. And so I encourage all of our listeners, shameless plug, to go to tfc.org slash action and check out, I think there's three thought pieces now that are that are on that site that are really important. So awesome. There you go.